All right, so this is a video on how to use the logic analyzer in the Tektronix scope. Now you can see that I have the two analog input channels on. Now these are uh, when you're going to be measuring most of your signals, most of your analog signals. You want to get the all the voltages over a period of time. You don't just want to get if if the input is above or below a threshold. With digital, however, we, we really only care if it's above or below a particular threshold. We only want to know if it's on or off. Now with digital, you also frequently have more than two channels, however, or you have the need for more than two channels. So the logic analyzer actually allows us to monitor multiple signals simultaneously. This particular oscilloscope will actually allow up to 16 channels simultaneously. There are other logic analyzers that will go significantly higher in channels. To show how the logic analyzer works and how the uh, what the output looks like, I'm going to use this CPLD. I have it just going through uh, eight outputs. So it's actually spelling uh, something in ASCII. Now on this board, you can see that I have, uh, I'm technically using eight LEDs, although D7 is never on because in ASCII, well, at least for the letters, it's, um, it's only actually seven bits wide. Now you can see the LEDs, this, I have a, an input clock going at about five hertz. So this is switching, this is going through the pattern uh, at a clock rate of five hertz. Now, obviously, you know, th this is not a very useful thing. Computers operate at much higher frequencies and other digital electronics operate at much higher frequencies than five hertz. So if I increase the frequency, for example, so that's 10 hertz. And it's already kind of difficult to see the information. There's 20, 30, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. And above that, it, they're just going to start appearing on all the time. So that's one kilohertz. And you can't even tell uh, if any of them are oscillating, if any of them are turning on and off. It's so rapid. Now, obviously, computers operate a million times faster than that. So you can imagine uh, using LEDs, using the human scale is not going to be terribly helpful. So, mm -hmm. so the logic analyzer uses this port down here at the bottom, and you can activate it by pressing that button. Now it also uses this particular cable. So this is the, the end that goes into it. And at the other end, we have uh, a pair of these connectors. So this actually will just disconnect quite easily. So this also has a reference connector, so it can only actually be connected. You can see that. So that can only be connected one particular way. Now you can actually, if you can see on this connector, you can uh, zero through seven. And on the other connector, it goes eight through 15. So that's the maximum number of inputs that we can actually use. Uh, then there's there's two grounds on there's, there's two grounds on each of these connectors, and this is going to be our reference. So this this will only fit in one way, and it's with this facing up. You just insert it like that, and you do insert a little bit more than just uh, with that. You have to push a little bit until you hear that click. Let me do that again. So I'll wait for the click. Just like that. So that's where we're connected. Now we're going to use just uh, channels zero through seven. So the first eight channels to uh, measure our logic. <laughs> all right, so I've got the CPLT uh, put on a breadboard so we can actually uh, connect all the pins. Um, so here you can say uh, so I've got the power and I've got the uh, signal going in to the particular pin that I was using. Now I'm using these uh, eight pins as my outputs in a row. So all I need to do is find the ground. So all I need to do is go through and connect all of them. So pin 31 is actually my D0. And so that's so I connect that. And I connect the next one. And 
And of course, I'm doing this with the power off. Let's switch around to the other side. That'll make life easy. And I don't know if you can see it, but here it's got these little little micro grabbers. So all you do is uh, squeeze it like that, and they come out. And then just grab onto the little connectors. All right, that's all of our connectors in order. Turn the power on. Output the signal generator. So I always like to just turn channel one and channel two off. And then all you have to do is press the button. All right, so you can see we don't have it quite set up. We only have, we're only measuring so far channel zero. You can see the time scale is not right, so I'm actually outputting a thousand uh, hertz, so one kilohertz, and uh, a, an increment of four microseconds is is far too small. Uh, so we can uh, you can either select each individual channel, or we can actually turn them on on and off simultaneously. So I'm going to press that button, and I'm going to actually go down here. I'm going to turn D7 through D0 off or on. Now you can see. They're all kind of bunched up here. And it puts zero at the bottom and it uh, counts up. So I actually want to change the height to large. So this kind of spreads it out. So medium, small is going to kind of compress them all down there. Uh, medium is obviously if you need to actually display all 16. And that one I think gives the, the best amount of information. Uh, so we can also control the thresholds. So this is the point where it turns on and off. I'm going to just keep it at default 1.4. So the signals we're actually putting to it are about 3.3 .3 volts. And uh, so I'm just going to keep it at that. Now all we need to do is change our time scale. And so we're going to increase it up. So there you can see all our data. I also want to make sure we set the trigger and I want to set the source. I want to set that to D0 just because. Now you can see channel 7 is off because we're just not using it. Channel 6 and channel 5. So you can see here there's a this is the, the low state and the high state. You can see a little bit better uh, on channel 4 through 2. So channel 7 is always low. Channel 6 and 5 are always high just because we're using the um, particular letters. That is just It just happens to be that uh, channel 6 and channel 5 are always high. They're always on. And so you can see channel 4, channel 3, channel 2, channel 1. So you could actually go through here starting at the most significant and count 0, 1, 1, Etc. And you can actually go through, and if you you know really bored and don't have much time, you have a lot of time on your hands. Uh, you can actually figure out what it is uh, I'm spelling out here in ASCII. All right, so you can use a lot of the sim functions as an oscilloscope. Like for example, you can turn the cursors on. And one thing that's nice about the using the cursors is that you don't actually have to go through and manually figure out what the binary is. Uh, it does it right here for you. So you can see this goes from most significant to least significant. So it assumes D7 is the most significant and D0 is the least significant. So you can actually go through. Let me, uh, I'll just scroll through the whole thing. And you can see what the letters I'm using. That's probably the whole message. 
All right, and that's the basics on how to use a logic analyzer on the oscilloscope.